I want to turn to um, taxes a little bit, right? So there's a few things going on across the country in taxes. And Mike, I want to start with you. So, so uh, I think Tom raised the, uh, the the notion, and I agree with this notion, right? That a government has a has a CEO, and just like a, a public company, it has its board of directors, okay, and the legislator and the and the and the Senate. And its primary function is how do we get as much production out of budget dollars that are uh, that are coming in that benefit as many of our constituents as possible. I don't know where the hell we've ever lost that concept here in America, right? But it doesn't seem to be to be working that way. And it would be a little unfair uh, to you because uh, you are in the minority in the assembly. I'm going to be very uh, fair to Tom because he's in the uh, in the majority. Okay, but certainly at the state level. Uh, I think a lot of people are scratching their heads and saying, you know, the governor is coming out with all of these initiatives, right? And I'm not going to weigh in on them, a good, bad, or different. They're coming out with all of these initiatives, and, and where the hell are the Republicans in the Assembly and the Senate uh, challenging them, coming out with new initiatives, and coming out with better ways to help support business and, uh, and residents? So uh, I'll, I'll pass that hot potato to you to begin with. Sure. No, happy, to, <coughs> happy to catch it. Uh, we have, our conference has put out a platform that does every every session uh, of but legislation. And, so why do we and hear it though? Well, the, the media frankly ignores it because we are in the minority. Uh, and that's just the way Albany works. It's very hard. You've got to, you've got to, you know, you try to get out and speak to the press, speak to media sources, try to develop relationships so that you can comment. I know on the issue of pension reform. I get calls from the media because I'm known as someone who advocates for pension reform and changing the compensation model for elected officials. But I believe in these issues, and you have to. It's a it's a tremendous platform to go out and advocate for this. Uh, so even though you know we like to say in our conference, you know, we win the debate, we just lose the vote. So <clears throat> the I will use my voice. At least will. Uh, to advocate advocate for this change. And quite frankly, when you talk taxes, this new federal tax bill, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what the governor says, I don't care what the county executive alone says, I don't care what Lee Zeldin says. In the long run, this is going to be good, not only for New York, but the other 11 blue states uh, that the governor pointed out in his budget message. Uh, they are not targeted. Uh, the federal government, in my view, is not assaulting New York or any other state here. Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost a million residents in the last decade. We've lost two members of Congress in the last redistricting, and we are going to lose one more. We are in a state of decline, quite frankly, in terms of our power in Washington. We're no longer the third largest state. We're now fourth, supplanted by Florida, all right? So when you talk taxes, for years, for years, the salt deduction has allowed blue states to avoid reality. That's no longer the case. So when you talk taxes, you've got to stop the evasive budgetary tactics that we're famous for here in New York, the underreporting of liabilities or undervaluing liabilities, using debt to pay off debt, skipping pension payments. That's not an issue here in New York, it is in Jersey, but we allow borrowing to pay pension payments. Suffolk County is about, what, $320, $350 million in debt? Yeah, we're just gonna get their pension obligations. Yeah. So this is, when you talk tax policy, Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, we have exploding public employee costs. All the money is in labor. You can do all the shared services you want, and I applaud that effort, but you're nibbling around the edges, and everybody knows it. You have to deal with compensation issues. And that means you've got to go to a defined pla uh, contribution platform for new hires outside of police and fire. You've got to tweak Triborough when the when these teacher contracts expire, you have to suspend these automatic escalators, 3%, 3%, on top of a negotiated agreement. And <clears throat> quite frankly, you need a 2% hard cap on binding arbitration awards. Right. So I just want to switch to Tom, and you, you know that I love you dearly, but I gotta, I gotta get this off my chest. You know, when, when we had a, uh, uh, you know, the Republican majority uh, come in, and we were told that the Republican Senate was going to be the firewall to keep uh, to keep Albany in check, okay? Um, the business community is pretty disappointed. All right, it seems that the governor again. I'm not going to weigh in on on the pluses or minuses of um, what his policies are. That's that's for you guys to sort of debate. 
but it seems like the governor is rolling out aggressively uh, his platform, okay, and the business community uh, is the continuous pocket that is going to be funding these things. And again, to, to just say my own personal disappointment, you know, the governor came up with an innovative workaround now for the for the tax plan that he came out. I don't I don't know if it's going to work or not work, right? And and it talks about administrative burdens on business and going in the pockets of employers. And the Republican response was that might work. And it's sort of like frustrating and outrageous that we don't have, it appears, strong advocacy at the Senate level uh, that's pro-business. So uh, perhaps in, in terms of leadership, like where, where are we headed with that? Well, first of all, that, uh, first off, that wasn't my response to the budget proposal. Uh, and you're right, uh, individual members, uh, and again, my background is you go into the, the boss's office or you sit around with your colleagues, you discuss items, you give your opinion, you give your strong opinion, you give your really strong opinion, and then a decision is made. Um, I can tell you that as somebody who did everything short of set himself on fire on the Capitol steps to prevent the $15 minimum wage, um, and would not relent until there was uh, a trigger in the study to ensure that we don't get crushed even further, um, I, I think that's something that we could have been more effective in. I believe if we stand up as a majority, I believe we have solutions to make the corporation better. Right. So everyone is not going to win on, on both sides. You're not going to get everything you want. But we can't govern from election cycle to election cycle and think that we're gonna have a healthy economy in this state. We can't govern from core constituency and demographic group and business groups that we like and don't like and think that we're gonna have a situation where people wanna stay in New York and young people wanna work here because the jobs are here or the streets are safe because you don't have MS-13 running around. So unless we make a firm decision as a majority or as individual members that you're going to call it like you see it, uh, and the, the call you like call it like you see it has to be based on ground truth, which means your members have to be out there and understand what's going on in their districts. And the members that I serve with certainly do. Uh, we need to have that kind of voice. I I believe that what the current budget that was proposed is just it's a non sector. I mean, we have to start with something else. And, and long before the federal tax implications, there, there was a problem looming. It, didn't, it wasn't caused by this recent tax bill. Uh, we need to really look at, again, cutting in places that maybe don't, doesn't feel right, but it, in the long-term health of our economy and the long-term health of the state is gonna be good. There's a, in this budget, take the fiscal stuff out of it. There's a 21% cut in Homeland Security, in the Department of Homeland Security Emergency Services in the state. I don't understand that. Anyone feel safer than they did last year in this country? I don't believe so. I know we're not safer. So I, I, I plan to be a very strong advocate, and I, I've always been a strong advocate. But in the end, it has to be as a group, as a whole.